We want to welcome you to Countdown to Courage. It is Tuesday, February the 2nd. Can you believe that we're already in the month of February? Uh, time flies when you're having fun. And so we welcome you today. I hope you're having a great day today. I hope you've had a, a good start to the week. Uh, we take off Monday on purpose as far as from the, from the broadcast but boy, do we ever look forward to Tuesday. And so we are glad you're here. It looks like we've got a good crowd tuning in. And so we thank the Lord for that. And we're not going to keep you long. All right. We're going to, we're going to try to get right into it today. And, and so listen, I would say this, that Lord willing, we'll try to do another giveaway this week. And uh, I, I believe you enjoy that. And I enjoy doing it. And, and so we'll look forward to, uh, to doing another giveaway so I hope you'll stay tuned all week with us, Tuesday through Friday, right here at 3 o'clock. And we're excited about what the Lord is going to do. Man, we're still excited about Sunday. What a great day that God gave us at Calvary. I hope you had a great day wherever you were attending church. Uh, all of our countdown or all of our Calvary family, you know what I'm talking about, tremendous day. Great crowds uh, Sunday morning and Sunday night. We thank the Lord for that. And then on top of that, great, a great spirit there all day. And then uh, what an exciting Sunday night. Uh, and then the church, we talked to the church about uh, going on to, to four new radio stations. And we're looking forward to uh, trademarking this Countdown to Courage um, on all the different stations. And so we're excited that, that God is blessing and the Countdown ministry is expanding. And so, man, that's wonderful. We, we're, we're pumped up about that. And so we look forward to uh, uh, being able to broadcast in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and then also over in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and let's see, Asheville, North Carolina, and also Greenville, South Carolina. And so we, we sure thank the Lord for what he is doing. Man, what a blessing. What, what, a, what a privilege to be in the work of the Lord. And how many know this? How many believe that we're living in the last of the last days and this is for all of us. If we've ever done something for the cause of Christ, we better do it now while we have time. I don't know how much time I have. I hope that I've got some time, but I don't know that I do. And so I want to make sure that I do everything I can for my Lord and all oh, my soul. Countdown family. How many, how many know that the Lord is worthy? He's worth it. He is worth it. He's worth us serving and, and giving energy and, uh, and uh, striving and and, uh, and we just thank the Lord. What, what a privilege to be in the work of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's do some shout outs quickly, and then we're going to get right into our, our lesson. So go ahead and grab your, uh, grab your Bibles. I have my beverage of choice today, my Diet Coke, my trusty Diet Coke, if you don't mind. I'm going to take a, a sip right there. A little bit of trouble with my voice here lately. And so you help me pray about that if you would. And all of you folks that suffer from allergies out there, you know what I'm, uh, you, you, know, you feel my pain. And so uh, anyway, but more importantly, make sure that you have your copy of the Word of God. We're going to get into our Bibles here in just a moment, and we're going to move rapidly. So I hope you have your Bible ready. Let's go ahead and see who is, uh, who's aboard today quickly. And I'll, I'll just mention names and run through these very quickly today. Uh, it looks like, uh, at least on my end, that Christine Hooks tuned in first. And so, Christine, great to see you and Brother Barry today. And I believe that you folks have some snow up around Morganton, North Carolina, and maybe even getting more. And so I hope you guys are warm and safe, and it's good to see you aboard today. Uh, Phyllis Hudson's watching, Phyllis. And Phyllis says, hello, everyone, and, and a hello back to Phyllis. Phyllis, good to see you today. I hope you and Jackie are having a great day today. Uh, Harriet Sheets Mason, Harriet Mason, Harriet's watching, and Harriet says, hello, Calvary family, and, and Miss Harriet, we sure appreciate you. God bless you. Uh, Michelle Hoots, Michelle, good to see you today, and uh, what a blessing you and Lee are, and all the children. We want to say hello to all of the kids as well. Good to see y'all today. Uh, Nina Hill, Nina and Mike, good to see y'all today. Been praying for you and Mike, and it's great to see you on Countdown. God bless you. Dreama Clark is watching. Uh, Dreama, good to see you and Brother David. Appreciate you folks in a big way, and hope all is going well today. Stacy Jarvis is watching from the road, and so Stacy, just make sure you don't get in the road. All right, make sure you're watching from the road, and we uh, we love Stacy and, and Krista. Good to see. Uh, you folks watching today. Christine Edwards. Hello, Christine. Hope you and Gary are having a wonderful Tuesday. And Christine, I hope you're making progress. 
uh, concerning uh, the mending of the bones there. I hope you're I hope you're doing well. If we can help, be sure you guys let us know. Uh, let's see here, Karen Hoffman. Hello, Miss Karen. I hope you're behaving yourself today, and and it's good to see you on here on this Tuesday. We sure appreciate Miss Karen in a big big way. Uh, Donnie and Tamara Gilly, always good to have the Gillies aboard, and we appreciate Donnie and Tamara. Uh, Eugene, Eugene, good to see you, brother. And uh, let's see, I think I saw your post where you said it was actually you and your and Melinda's anniversary. And so, Countdown family, help help us uh, help us wish brother Eugene happy anniversary. Of course, Melinda went to heaven uh, sometime back, and. And boy, what a time she's having right now. And, and uh, Eugene, thank the Lord for that glad reunion day. What a day it's going to be. So thankful for the hope of heaven, that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. And so Eugene, God bless you, my friend. Good to see you today. Uh, Almeida Campbell's watching. Almeida, good to see you today. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you and Charles are having a blessed day today. Amy Queen's watching. Amy, good to see you uh, we appreciate you, Jennifer Burton. Jennifer, good to see you back on Countdown today. God bless you. Uh, Kim Meadows, Kim, good to see you on here. Hope you're, uh, hope you're having a tremendous day today. Uh, Janie speaks. Janie, good to see you. Uh, let's, she says, Wayne, Janie, and Angel are watching today. And so all three of y'all, welcome aboard. We sure appreciate the Speaks family. God bless y'all. Uh, let me see quickly today. Um, there's Lee. Lee Hoots is aboard. Lee, good to see you. Hope you're having a tremendous day today. Great to see you, my friend. Uh, Mike Hill, Brother Mike, good to see you today. And I hope uh, that you and Miss Knight are doing well. Uh, Taylor Johnson, Taylor, good to see you today. Uh, missing you at Calvary. And I hope you're having a wonderful day today. God bless you. Uh, let me see here. Let me make sure I don't miss anybody. And Benfield, and good to see you. Uh, we sure appreciate all that Miss Ann does for the church. Uh, she is uh, such a uh, a big team member. We appreciate Miss Ann uh, working around the church like she does. And good to see you today, uh, Patsy Bird. Patsy, good to see you. Hope you and Ronnie are having a great day today. Uh, let me see. Uh, Robert Collard is watching today. Robert, uh, is this your first time tuning in? If it is, God bless you. So good to have you aboard. If not. We welcome you back. Good to see you, Robert. God bless you. Let me see. Lauren Seats. Lauren, good to see you. Hope you and Abel are having a great day today. Uh, Debbie Johnson, good to see you on Countdown. God bless you. Uh, Brother Barry, I see you tuned in. Brother Barry Hooks, good to see you, Barry. God bless you. Uh, let me see here. Laura Blackburn. Laura, good to see you today. God bless you. Uh, Debbie Tucker, good to see Debbie on here with us today. My soul, we've got a great crowd watching, and that's a few that have tuned in now. Others will catch this on the what we call the rebound, and by that I mean that some of our folks watch it on the way home from work, and others will catch it on a totally different day, and however you do, that's fine. We're just, you know what, we're just honored. I mean that. We're honored to have you aboard today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Now, if all we were going to do is just get on here and sort of shoot the breeze, it really wouldn't be worth you tuning in, would it? Uh, although we enjoy that, we enjoy the fellowship, we enjoy the connection, which is really why Countdown started. But we want to get into the lesson today. We want to get into the Word for a few moments at least. And so go ahead and grab your Bibles, if you will, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the split screens. And I want you to take your Bibles today, if you would, and turn to 1 Timothy chapter number 6. And of course, we've been talking about this subject, the attitude every Christian should have concerning money. Now, again, I, I asked this last week, and I'll ask it again. Please don't tune us out or, or turn us off because we're talking about money. Whenever you begin to talk about money, people begin to take it very personally, and most folks don't want anybody sort of butting in their business when it comes to money. And so I want to I, I assure you very quickly that, that I'm not going to try to mind your business uh, but I would say this, that uh, people are amazed sometimes to find out that the Word of God actually talks about money a lot. It talks about money a lot. Sometimes people will jokingly say, well, the preacher's going to preach his favorite sermon today on tithing, and although there's nothing nothing wrong with preaching on tithing, I'm going to be honest with you, if I'll answer for anything in eternity, it'll probably be because I didn't preach on money enough because I didn't preach on tithing enough. 
And so the Word of God is our guidebook, and the Word of God uh, addresses this thing of money. Now, that's one of the things that Paul is writing here to Timothy uh, in this letter, this first epistle to Timothy. Now, we've learned several things. Number one, we notice there is an appeal to be content. Let us be content, Paul said. Uh, and so don't be always worried about trying to make a little bit more, trying to you know, live in a little bit bigger house or have a better car. And all. There's nothing wrong with those things, but those things should not consume you. And so we see an appeal to be content. Then number two, we notice an admonition concerning riches. Again, we know that, that uh, we're to be very careful about the love of money. Some people have said that, that money is the root of all evil, and that's not exactly right. Uh, the Bible does not say that money is the root of all evil. The Bible says for the love of of money is the root of all evil. So we have to be very, very careful about this appeal uh, to, and this admonition concerning riches. Now, let's go further today, and I want you to hang in there with me today. We're going to talk about this. Number three is we see some advice concerning debt, concerning debt. And I'll put the uh, verse up on your screen, but if you've got your Bible, look with me, if you will, please, at First Timothy chapter number 6. And verse number nine, the Bible says, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lust. Notice this statement, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Now, you'll notice on your screen, I've got a few words emboldened and underlined. And I've got which drown men. I've got that emboldened and underlined on your screen. Uh, the, the word drown there means to plunge into the deep or to sink. And whenever I see that word drown or drowning, uh, it automatically really really makes me think about debt. How many have ever heard this statement? You've heard of people drowning in debt. Uh, you've heard uh, someone maybe even humorously say that I am, uh, I, I am up to my eyeballs in debt. Now, what were they saying? They were saying, man, I've got, so much I've got so much debt that I feel like I'm literally drowning. I feel like I'm sinking. I feel like I, I, I'm losing control. And so that's what the Word of God is, is challenging us about today, that we're to be very, very careful about this thing of debt. Now, let me put a big, bold statement on your screen today, bottom portion of your screen. Somebody said this, if your outgo exceeds your income, then your upkeep will be your downfall. And that is so good. Uh, listen, uh, good neighbor, if, if you've got more going out than what's coming in, uh, you're going to be in a mess. I mean, you're, you're going to be in a mess. And and if we're not careful, debt can begin to take control of our lives. And the Bible challenges us to be so careful about this thing of debt. We find here in 1 Timothy chapter 6 that debt can begin to serve as a distraction. And it can begin to pull us away from the will of God. Again, how many times have we seen that? We've seen people that uh, have gotten into terrible debt. And because of that, they feel like they've got to work all the time. Uh, and, and, and what happens is it often begins to pull them away from the will of God. It pulls them away from their Bible reading. It pulls them away from the house of the Lord. Uh, they have to sacrifice their church attendance because they're trying to work to make sure that they cover all the debt <clears throat> that they have incurred. Now, again, look back at our key verse here, verse number nine. The Bible says, but they that will be rich fall into temptation. Notice this, and a what? And a snare, a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Now, a snare, and we have people in our church who trap, and you folks, if you've ever used a snare, normally what you do is you have to put some bait into that snare to draw people into that. And the Bible is likening debt to that, that debt can lure us into a snare. And some, uh, in, in fact, Henry Shaw said this. He said, debt is like any other trap, easy enough to get into, but hard enough to get out of. And again, I just, you know, here again, I'm not trying to 
meddle today. I'm not trying to meddle in anybody's personal business today. I wouldn't do that. I have no, uh, you know, uh, no, I, I, I don't want to do that. I just want to try to be here, be a blessing to you and try to give you something from the word of God. But I do want to try to echo what the spirit of God is trying to tell us from the word of God. And that's this, that we have to be so careful about this thing of debt because debt can become a master in our life. And if we're not careful, we become the slave to debt. Uh, listen to this, and, and let me just give you some statistics. Sometimes statistics, uh, statistics help us. And uh, did you know that now that debt and money problems are now the number one reason for divorce in America? In fact, I read uh, today, 56%, I think, 56% of those who divorce, uh, a lot of times it's because of debt. They've allowed themselves to get into so much debt that they're having to work all the time. They have no time for one another, no time for the kids. Uh, and and sometimes we, we work to get into that larger house. And what's so sad is once we get that larger house, <laughs> we're working all the time. But we don't have no time to be in that larger house. And so it doesn't make any sense, does it? Sometimes it's like we're like being, it's like being a gerbil on the wheel. I mean, we're just going and going and going and going and you have to stop sometimes just ask yourself, for what? I mean, really, for what? Um, in 1929, only 2% of American homes had a mortgage. In 1929, only 2% of Americans had a mortgage. By 1969, only 2% did not have a mortgage. Uh, the Consumer Report Money Book states that the typical household has $38,000 in debt. But this is the one that I'm really uh, that I'm really focused on. Listen to this: Consolidated Credit Counseling Services found that 71 percent of Americans, 71 percent of Americans say that debt is making their home life unhappy. Oh my! Now that's the one I'm really, I, I'm really uh, you know consumed on right there. I don't want you to be unhappy. I don't want your home life to be unhappy. Uh, my wife and I, Lord willing, we're going to be involved in a marriage workshop this week, and we'll be conducting a marriage workshop at the, the Solid Rock Baptist Church with Brother uh, Jason Penley. And uh, we love marriages that are on top side and couples that are in love and, and families that are sharp and, and happy and, and contented. And the worst thing in the world is to see a marriage that's unhappy or a family that's breaking apart. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of times, what causes that is what we're talking about today, this subject of debt, of debt. Now, that's deep, and that's heavy. I know it is. And so let me give you something that's a little, <laughs> that's a little lighter, a little lighter note. And so I read the story of a man who called the police, and, and they came, and he was filling out the uh, police report, and uh, someone had came and stolen all of his wife's credit cards. And so the deputy was filling out all the needed information. And the man said to the deputy, he said, by the way, he said, don't be too zealous about catching the thief because to be quite honest, he's charging less than my wife ever did. Now, again, uh, hey, listen, that's just a, a humorous little story there. But, uh, but we, we, all of us, me and you, we have to be so careful about this thing of debt. Now, the truth of the matter is sometimes you may have to incur some debt. Houses cost a lot of money. And so I understand that every once in a while you may have to incur some debt. But I want to give you I want to give you what the Bible says. I want to show you what the Bible says about this thing of debt, if I could. Now, I'll put a reference on the bottom of your screen there. But right before you, you can turn there, and while you're turning, let me read another portion of scripture. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7 says, The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Again, there's that idea that if we're not careful about debt, debt becomes the master, we become the slave. But look, if you will, at Proverbs chapter 6 and verse number 1. And the Bible says this, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend. In other words, if you have, if you've got yourself in debt, if you are in debt to a lender is what the Bible is talking about there 
if thou be surety, surety is that idea of interest. It's the idea of, uh, of a loan, if you will. If thou be surety for thy friend, if you borrowed from a friend, so to speak, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, in other words, you've shook on it. You've signed on the dotted line. By the way, by the way, I heard the other day of someone who, who took out a huge debt without, uh, without, any, uh, <clears throat> without any thoughts of ever paying it back. Now, I'm going to tell us today, you know what that is? That's dishonest. That's dishonest. And the Bible says that if we incur debt, if we shake on it, if we sign on it, uh, look what the Bible says here. If thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, <clears throat> verse two says, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of the mouth. In other words, uh, put your money where your mouth is. If you have said that we'd like to borrow this money, but we will pay it back. Did you know that as a child of God, we have a responsibility under God to pay that money back. Amen. Now, <clears throat> boy, that's not a popular teaching in this generation in which we're living, but that's a Bible teaching. And so <clears throat> if we're going to go into debt, we have a God-given responsibility to pay that debt back. So if you're not planning on paying it back, then you better not take it out. Now, look what the Bible says here, verse number three. If we go into debt, the Bible says in verse three, do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go humble thyself and make sure thy friend give not sleep to thine eyelids. Let me, let me back up. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids, Verse five says, deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. In other words, the Bible is telling us this. This is so good. The Bible is saying this, that if we sign on the dotted line, if we shake hands, by the way, <clears throat> years ago, we didn't have to sign on the dotted line. Years ago, a man's word was his bond. Years ago, we could shake hands on something and it was, it was a done deal, but uh, and that's what the Bible's talking about here. But if you go to someone and you borrow money and you sign on the line and you say, I I'm going to pay this back, then the Bible says in verse number three that you better work like everything to make sure that you pay that debt off. Uh, don't be the kind of uh, don't don't be the kind of person that incurs debt and then you don't pay your bills. And I believe this too. And I know, I know that many of you do as well. I believe this. I believe that we ought to pay our bills on time. My wife and I, to God be the glory, my wife and I, we try to pay our bills early. And not just on time, but early. And so I believe that we ought to have a good name. Financially, I believe we ought to have a good name. I believe our church ought to have a good name. And I'm thankful that Calvary does have a good name. But I believe that us personally and individually, because we name the name of Christ, we ought to make sure that we uh, have a good name financially. Well, that's what the Bible says about debt. And uh, I know that that's one of those, those, uh, uh, those subjects that people don't want to talk about a lot of times, but I'm glad the Word of God deals with it. And I'm glad it gives us some wonderful, wonderful counsel concerning this thing of finances. Well, we're just about done with 1 Timothy, and it won't be long. We'll be migrating over into 2 Timothy, and so I hope that you'll stay, stay tuned. Hey, listen, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 3 p.m. If you're watching today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you don't know for sure that you're going to heaven, I hope you'll, you'll reach out to us. We would love to give you some scripture and try to help you concerning uh, your relationship with Christ, and so please do that. And then for all of our Countdown family, don't forget, be kind to everyone because everyone's having a tough time. All oh, this and speaking to somebody's life today and being an encouragement. Well, listen, we're out of time. We'll do the giveaway later this week. I hope you'll be back with us. And so Countdown family, we love you. Hope you have a great rest of the day. God bless.